Hi and welcome to Knowledge Centre TV. What I'd like to do is give you a bit of an insight into what I'll be covering at our upcoming Power of Choice seminars, full details of which are on our website. You see, firstly, I believe that we really only have two years as investors to truly maximise the opportunities available to us with the current market conditions. And what I'd like to do is just expand a little bit on that. You see, for starters, what investors need to know are these two very important figures. Firstly, our population growth. In 2006 to 2007, our population growth was 315,700. So what this is, is this is extra people being brought into the country. This is uh, new babies being born. And this is the net figure of all those people who have left the country, people who have passed away. So what it means is our population grew at just over 315,000. The interesting thing to note is, compare that to the number of dwellings that, that actually got approved during that same period. And by dwellings, what is meant is houses, units, apartments, basically where people would like to live. So we approved in Australia, this is nationally, 151,555 new dwellings were approved and 315,000 is what the population grew by. Now, <clears throat> at a first glance, you may think, well, we're not quite building enough. But if you take into account that of this 315,000, you know, a large percentage of that is babies. In fact, probably about 40 to 44 percent is just natural growth of the population. In other words, people being born or babies being born. So not all of these are necessarily adults that each individual person will want a place to live. In fact, some of these make up families, people coming overseas for the first time, and so on. So what you could pretty much do, and this would be my assumption, a safe assumption is that we would want to be building at least the 50% of the population growth in dwellings. In other words, at 315,000, we'd want to be building about 150,000 dwellings in order to sort of keep up with that level. And as you can see, we built about 151, or oh, sorry, we got approved 151,000. So what does this mean? Well, if we to extend this out of what's currently been happening and look at these two things, compare them graphically, this is what we end up with. So if we draw a line down here and go along the bottom, what this represents on the left here is this is your population growth, this figure here. And what we've got is we've had about a 300,000 population growth. Okay? This represents, say, the year 2007, which is June 2007. And this is where we've been, sort of for the last couple of years, our population has steadily been going up. All right, now let's compare this to dwellings. So on the other side of this graph here, we'll actually say this is your dwellings approved. Now, comparatively, as I said before, we're looking at about 50%. We'd want to be building about 50% of the dwellings of the amount of the population growth. So here is our, round about the same level there, is 150,000 dwellings approved every year. So what's been happening <coughs> over the last few years is we've actually been approving slightly higher dwellings in our population growth, which is good. So we've had this sort of round about 160,000 and it's sort of come up to a point where now our population growth and our dwellings, just taking a look at the last 12 months or so, are kind of on par. Now what's going to happen to the population over the next few years? Well, the Australian Bureau of Statistics, this is where these numbers come from, predict our population is going to continue to grow. It's going to continue to grow because of migration, people coming into Australia from overseas. It's also going to continue to grow because of our babies. More babies are being born at the moment. And also the life expectancy of the individual is actually increasing. So what this means is less people are dying, so the population will also continue to grow. So these factors will push the Australian population into higher and higher realms that we've never seen before. However, due to the uh, credit crunch, the subprime crash that's happened in America, 
banks, and I'm sure you're, a lot of you are aware of this, it's much harder now to get financed than it was, say, 6 or 12 months ago. And what we're finding is before you could maybe get, you know, put 5% deposit down on a property or maybe even 10%. But now, more and more banks are requiring about 20% deposit for investment property, residential investment property. They want at least about 20% deposit. When it comes to doing developments, before you could maybe do 20 or 30% for a development, now it's more like 30 to 40% for a development. So what does this mean? This is putting a bit of a squeeze on the amount of dwellings that can actually be built. So while some might have been approved, and remember this is an approval figure, while some might have been approved, the actual numbers that are going to be built and probably approved over the next few years is bound to come down. Okay, now I'm exaggerating that line there to prove a point here. So what is going to happen then to the property prices? Because if you look at this, if we've got less dwellings being approved or being built and our population going up, what is going to happen? And this gap here, the bigger this gap, this represents demand. Now demand is a key thing. If you understand the economy and you understand what drives property prices or even share prices, it is this factor of supply and demand. Now, this is pretty simple, but it does need reiterating. If you've got a lot of something available and not much demand, the price will be cheap. So if you've got lots and lots of property for sale and no one really wants to buy it, the prices will come down. This is happening in America at the moment. However, in Australia we have a different scenario. What's going to happen here is demand's going to be increased. Population increasing, dwellings coming down, or the number being built coming down especially, due to this current credit crunch that we have. Therefore, what happens is people are going to need, or investors are going to need, more money to put into their investments or their developments in order to continue to build. Nevertheless, the demand is going to increase. Now when demand increases, the supply, and is not there, the supply is not there, the prices go up. Now right around Australia at the moment, a lot of you will say, well, property prices aren't going up. Some, in fact, some are maybe coming down a little bit. And this is a, a manifestation of the fact that a lot of people are finding it hard to get money. However, over the next two years, those that are cashed up, those that know how to get into the marketplace, are going to have a unique opportunity. Because it's my opinion that this credit crunch will last two years. After two years, I think they'll ease off a little bit, it'll become easy to get finance, and then the, and the market will start to move again. Under these current conditions that I've highlighted today, what we will see is rents going up, which is happening, and also the, the pressure on the economy. People are going to need to be start getting paid more. Salaries will probably start to go up. All of these things will start to happen. And over the next two years, there will be then a shift and people will start to want to buy their own property because they'll be able to afford to do it and they'll be able to get the finance. The question is, is how does the investor today take advantage and get into the market over the next two years, take advantage of it and get into position? And that's what I'll be covering at our Power of Choice seminar. So I, I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching and remember, never stop.